One of the most difficult and critical skills to managing an RV is learning how to back it and back it well. You'll find that when you go to a campground and you arrive in the evening around five or six o'clock and most everybody's already there, you become the entertainment for everybody else. And as it states, what happens at the campground gets laughed about all year long, no kidding at all. So you wanna become very good at backing so it looks very precise and very boring when you arrive there. So it starts off with your mirrors. The mirrors is the whole trick to backing. As this uh, slide indicates, a one in five accidents occurs because the mirrors aren't properly adjusted and you create your own blind spots. So on your flat mirror, assuming you have a two-part mirror, you should see directly 200 feet plus behind you, not the rear of the coach, not the rear tire. On the convex mirror, you should see out along the vehicle on both sides, the edge of the wheels, the curb, and beyond, the lane next to you and the lane beyond that. It's not made to use to see if your front wheels are straight, but sometimes, it's set so well that you can actually see your front wheels when you're driving a coach with the wheels behind you. So proper mirror adjustment. When you look at the mirror, you should see only an inch of the side of the coach in the right side of the mirror on your driver's side or your passenger side. Adjust it to show the ground on the bottom one third. You should then see the, the sky and the roadway behind you in the remaining two thirds of the mirror. On the convex mirror, you wanna turn it all the way out, just so you see the rear bumper of the coach in the back. You wanna be able to see the ground right below the bumper, and then you wanna be able to see both the lane next to you and the lane next to that over there. A couple of cautions. When you begin to do backing, you might lose sight of something you see in the mirror. If you lose sight of it as you're backing up, stop, adjust the mirror so you can find it, if you can't find it in the mirror, that's when you stop and get out and look. Where did that object, that car, that cone, that post go to? Because you might have backed right up and lined up with it. Become familiar with the mirror control switch. You don't got to stop and look at the switch and look at the adjustment every time you need it. Find it, know you can reach it, find out how to quickly change from left mirror to right mirror and adjust that mirror appropriately. As you back up, do not become fixated on one mirror or the other. Instead, as you back up, look at this mirror for two seconds ultimate to this mirror for two seconds. Two seconds, two seconds, two seconds. Otherwise, if you become fixated on one mirror, you tend to track that way as you back up. You'll use the, the flat mirror every time you back up. You'll use the convex mirror on every single turn or every single lane change. Let's recognize the blind spots around your RV. There are actually four. The front blind spot is the one that's most overlooked. Because you sit back from the wheel and the dashboard's in front of you, there's typically an area of 12 to 18 feet in front of you where you can see nothing that's shorter than your knees. So before you pull ahead, it behooves you to get out and walk out and check that there is nothing sitting directly in front of you like a Walmart grocery cart, a garbage can, a dog, a child, etc. The second blind spot and third blind spot are on your left and your right. And you'll use the mirror adjustments to pick up most of that to the point where the, the blind spots are actually three lanes over. The fourth blind spot is in the rear. Typically you have a backup camera and a backup camera may be a single faceted camera where it's looking straight back or it might be multifaceted where it's looking back or straight down. You wanna understand the limits of the backup camera. So when you back up, you don't back up too far and hit the vehicle. Uh, sometimes the camera stops a foot off from the bumper. Sometimes it stops three feet off from the bumper. So get a good understanding of that before you take off and do your first backing exercise. Now there are some potential vertical blind spots. Because your mirrors are so close, you may see straight back, but you may not see the bottom or the top of the coach. So if you're near something that would possibly cause damage to one of those two points, maybe you just stop and adjust the mirror up and down to make sure those areas are clear or lean forward into the mirror to get a broader view. There are some options you can add to your mirrors to even add more viewpoints. On your right mirror, you can add two additional mirrors which show the corner and a crossover mirror like most school buses have, but they're much smaller. But they are very valuable to know how far you can pull up on another vehicle or to an obstacle. If you're having a hard time spotting the traffic directly over the passenger side window, you might add an overhead convex mirror like many of the truckers have which lets you see directly down next to the vehicle. If that's not an option, you can use a stick-on Fresno lens, which basically amplifies the view you have in a broad view. You can stick on the window on the passenger side or in a back window, say in the kitchen area, looking down over that side of the vehicle, eliminating that blind spot directly next to the vehicle. Whenever you back up, 
as I said before, temporarily adjust your flat mirrors down so you can see the rear bumper and the rear tires of the vehicle as you're backing up. Because the convex mirrors are distorted, they don't give you a true sense of distance, where the flat mirrors will give you a pre precise step for session as you back up. Related to backing up your vehicle, the two sides, left or right, are referred to as the view side and the blind side. The view side is the driver's side, where you can actually turn your head and view where you're backing out the window. The blind side is on the passenger side, where you really can't see where you're going, or can barely see with the mirror. As you're backing up and you're seeing the vehicle is tending to trend left or right, you wanna make minor corrections to realign the vehicle straight with the area you're backing into. A minor would not be a full 90 degree turn with the steering wheel, rather it would be a subtle turn. And if we look at the, the clock positions, you're holding the wheel at nine and three backing up. So if you need to, to move the vehicle more to the blind side, you're to go from 12 to one. If you move the vehicle to the driver's side or view side, 12 to 11 and back again. And typically making corrections, you're gonna make a correction and then maybe a slight counter correction before you go back to 12 o'clock again. In making backing corrections, if you have a trailer behind you, you're gonna steer with the bottom of the wheel, having putting one hand at a six o'clock position and making corrections either at nine o'clock or three o'clock. We'll go more into that in the driving section of the course. Wheel lock corrections, you always wanna figure out is your, before you're backing up where the center of the wheel is when the wheels are straight. And the way you do that is turn the wheel all the way to one point where it stops, which is wheel lock, then count the number of revolutions to the other wheel lock and divide by two. Typically it's somewhere in four and a half to four, one side to the other. So if you ever need to figure out if the wheels are straight or not, you don't need to look out the window Rather, just take it to wheel lock and go back two turns. Now, if you're ever backing and you've got a tag axle, you should always attempt to lift or take the load off the tag axles with the tag axle dump. You will also notice as you back up, there'll be some deformity as those tag axles or tires will drag a little bit, showing a bit of angle to them when you're backing up. It's not to be alarmed. Just make sure that before you stop the vehicle and park it for the night, that you pull the vehicle forward to allow both wheels to align with one another. Now, based upon the length of the vehicle, which is the wheelbase and a number of wheels it has on the back drive tires, it's gonna, be, it's gonna react differently as you back up. For example, a very short wheelbase vehicle, like a pickup truck, will have a very quick reaction time when you turn the wheels left or right. On a dual rear axle vehicle, it'll be a little bit slower. If a dual rear axle RV that is 45 feet long with tag axles, the reaction time is even slower. So based upon which vehicle you're driving, you're gonna notice different response times in the, the vehicle's ability to turn. So patience is required. Backing is considered such a dangerous activity for school bus drivers that they actually forbid drivers from backing unless given specific dispatcher approval because they're afraid they'll back over a kid or do property damage. The next slide is one of a, my past students who had a new RV and was backing into their driveway and found little concern with actually brushing a bush along the side of their driveway. That was until they realized that right behind the bush was the handle for the side door stairwell. It did considerable damage to the rear compartment doors of the RV and now they learn they trimmed that bush back. Coming down to wrapping this up, avoid backing if at all possible. If you must back, plan ahead and minimize the distance that you have to back up. Be certain the area you're backing into is clear of obstructions and cross traffic. Use a guide for, to spot you whenever possible and to watch the rear end and watch for cross traffic. And if you can't use a spotter, feel compelled to get out and look periodically, even if it's every four to 10 feet to make sure you're still clear and nothing has come into your path. And never rely on a backup camera to catch everything, because by the time the backup camera catches it, it's debris on the ground. And if in doubt, don't do it. Tips for uneventful backing. First of all, start off as close to straight with the intended path that you need to be. Secondly, avoid using the gas pedal unless needed. Let the idle pull you through a backing maneuver. Engage your hazard lights to alert others that you are now a hazard backing up. Many RVs have no backup alarm. Fourth, break the task into small steps. Back up halfway, back up all the way, get out, look, and then realign the vehicle, for example. Number five, take it slowly, deliberately, and strategically. Six, don't feel pressure by observers, traffic, or the neighbor sitting in a lawn chair holding a beer. Get out and look, number seven, as much as you need, 
to visualize what you're doing is working. Number eight, take a short break before doing the final tweaking into position. And nine, don't ever back up with a tow vehicle attached behind you. And if you do have a trailer and you're backing up, remember the backing maneuver changes from working the top of the wheel to one hand at the bottom, using that to correct where the trailer is going into. And with that, we've covered mirror usage and proper backing technique and several helpful hints that should get you through your next backing maneuver scot-free. On to the next section.